everybody, welcome back. My name is Chris Olivier. This is my channel, Best Day Ever Today. Today we're going to talk about prosthetics. If you're watching this, you're probably interested in upgrading your prosthesis or buy, buying a new one, getting one for the first time getting something that is better than the previous one you've heard or maybe you've had a problem with the old one like I had a lot of different problems with my with my legs and you want to get some advice on what to do and what not to do in order to improve your quality of life and after all that is what it's all about is to go from a state of having lost our limb our, our leg in this instance and getting ourselves back to quality of life as quickly as possible so here I am an amputee without my prosthesis here I am an amputee with my prosthesis, what are the obstacles to this guy, the amputee with the prosthesis, and good quality of life, as opposed to a miserable guy with a prosthetic leg that isn't working out, that, that is causing a lot of frustration and anger, losing me a lot of money and doing nothing to help me to get on with my life. But today, um, it's all about prosthetics and, and amputation. So what I, what I thought today is I'd speak to, to those of you directly, those of you that have lost limbs or uh, in particular, um, a leg, although I suppose losing a, a limb is different, but also similar in many, in many ways. But um, so I want to talk to you. I want to talk about a very, very important aspect of all of that, which is once we've been to hospital, we've we've lost the leg, and we've got to make new decisions to to get on with our lives. Not, I mean, I um, had my accident when I was 34. I had a bum leg for four years. At 38, I had to make a decision because infection and pain was killing me, and Kind of pulling me out of life, uh, depressing me. I was in a bad state. I was banging on. About, I was taking a lot of painkillers. I became addicted to painkillers. I didn't really like myself too much, and, and I had to do something differently. So, so after four years of having a bum leg, I decided that I had to get rid of it. So I had a, 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 I had this accident. They tried to rescue the leg. I had like 24 operations through all of this. And, and I needed to get on with my life. I needed to make a decision. Essentially, I had to decide what am I going to keep the leg um, and, and this is it, pain and, and infection and nowhere to go or am I going to make a decision to, to amputate and try something different. It's a big risk to take but the worst possible thing I could have done was not to take the next step. I would have hated myself if I'd done it another four or five years down the line and experienced what I've experienced subsequently. So by having the leg amputated, by no means did it solve my problems, but it gave me opportunity to do things differently. It opened up the window to, to something else and something different. And not for one minute, not for a second, have I doubted subsequently that I'd made the right decision. It was the right decision to make without a doubt. It's given me new opportunities and helped me to refocus my life on some of what I'm doing now or do, being a counselor or helping people that struggle with with different aspects of uh, disability, amputation, addiction, etc, etc. Et so I don't want to bang on about all that stuff again and the struggles, but what I really want to get to today is what do we do once we've lost the limb and we've kind of gone through that initial recovery period and we want to get on with our lives. Now, for me, once I'd made the decision and I had gone to have the leg amputated, I was absolutely determined to get back on my feet, to get back on my foot as quickly as possible. There was something about having one leg and moving it on a crutches that I found humiliating. Um, it's, it was, I mean, it's practically as problematic because you can't carry anything. I mean, there are many reasons why walking with crutches sucks, but to walk with crutches with a stump and one leg, something about that sucked terribly. So I was so determined to get over it and get a prosthetic leg and move on as quickly as possible. And, and herein, I made a lot of mistakes. And hopefully when I'm speaking to you and you've gone through uh, some of what I've gone through and we've gone through similar things, you can take some of what I have to say today and not make the same mistakes that I made. So the first thing I want to do is to get back onto my legs, get back on my feet, um, which meant that I needed a prosthetic leg. So I set out to go and investigate different people that, that could help me and I was quite determined to find the right guy. After all, it's a quality of life issue. I thought I'd get the right leg. When I saw what these things cost, it's astronomical. So I set aside a budget to get it right and I had to be really careful about getting the, getting the right leg. So I saw three or four different people and the guy I chose ultimately to work with was the guy that had the best equipment, that had the neatest facility, who looked the most 
secure in what he was doing. He had a nice German car park to touch. It all looked good. And something about that appealed to me. Sadly, it was a mistake. I thought that this guy must have made a shitload of money because of all the hard work that he does. I'm not saying he doesn't work hard, but subsequently I think I've realized that it's not only because he's worked hard, but it's also because he completely overcharged on, on what he had done for me. And that really pisses me off. I'm sitting in my workshop today because this morning I decided to clear out my workshop and pack things right and fix it up and throw out some old shit. And, and I came across all the old prosthetic legs that I've now used over many, that I've now used over many years. And my mind started going to the amount of money that I've spent on prosthetic legs. And then I started thinking about what I could have done with that money. So in other words, the opportunity cost. Uh, so my mind started going to, was it necessary to have spent all that money on, on all the prosthetic legs that I have lying around here? And the answer is definitely not. I really screwed up, made some bad decisions. And a lot of it was based on the feedback we get. And that part pisses me off even more because when you, an amputee, all new in, in this world of disability, you're vulnerable, you're scared, you're frightened, your self-esteem is probably not good, your self-esteem is probably at a low point, um, and, you, and you're desperate, you're really desperate to find the best possible solution. And I do believe that there are people, and I've experienced there are people out there that will take advantage of people in that situation and people with that vulnerability at that point. So I ended up buying a bunch of shit that I never really needed and all kinds of complications. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I bought and as you can see I've got a leg on at the moment, that, and that, a leg that really, that really works for me but it's not without its own problems. So, so the only part I'm going to focus on today really is, after I've shown you a couple of, well I'll show you a couple of, the, a couple of the bits and pieces lying around you, is the part I want to focus on is when you look for a prosthetist, somebody who's going to make your leg, don't look at the equipment that he, don't look at his workshop, don't look at his whatever, blah, blah, blah. Speak to the guy, find the guy that listens to what you have to say, the guy that really hears what your needs are, the guy that asks the right questions, like what is your lifestyle like? What, are your, what is your threshold for frustration? What is your threshold for pain? Um, you'll know intuitively that he's asking the right questions. Let the guy listen to you, the guy, the, the woman, whatever. Let them listen to you. Don't let them tell you what you need for your own body. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I found lying in my workshop this morning. Knee number one. This is a good knee, but it was all wrong the way that it was mounted to the, to the prosthetic leg. And this is the foot. Then that good knee I just showed you gave in and they gave me a new one, another good knee, but without any feedback on what is maintenance and how I should be used. And I'm quite a mechanically minded person, as you can see from the, the and I'm quite a mechanically minded person, as you can see from what's happening in my workshop, but so they gave me good knee, very not the right guidance, not to use it properly, and, and I need to take some responsibility for that, but I do hold my prosthesis accountable for, for, for a lot of the problems that I did encounter. But after all, he's the, he's the specialist, not me. I was the vulnerable guy that needed to get on with my life and needed a, needed a knee. And so on and so on and so on. But more recently I had a leg made, and it's it's the leg, and I'll go through all the different legs. It's called an Aptesco. The previous one I had was called an Otto Bach. This is amazing because it has a few electronics that regulates how fast you want to walk, your gait, etc. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it really is quite a remarkable piece of equipment. But the guy that sold it to me emigrated and failed to tell me that it has a battery unit which I can now no longer source. In other words, I would have had this leg for, I've had it for a year now. I'm going to use it because the battery life is about a year. I'm going to use it a bit more and then I'm going to be no battery and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. In the meantime, I've asked somebody to look out. Is it possible to find another, another battery for this, for this baby? But I'm going to have another problem and I'm probably going to have to have another leg made. So and then I got this knee. This knee is called a total knee. It's an American knee. It's not bad. Aesthetically, I think it's aesthetically, I don't think it's very pleasing. It's very functional look about it, very mechanical look about it. I like my socket. It's got a nice carbon fiber look to it. You can see it's got an adjustable strap here to tighten it and loosen it. And it's got a valve right here to where air can escape like this one as you 
as you're forcing your, your leg, your knee to for the suction to hold it in place, to keep it in place, which is important for me because I like to ride my bicycle, right? I like my motorbike, and I am generally quite active. This is the most important part of what I'm wanting to share with you guys today is that the knee, yes, it is important and it makes a big difference and it's, it's really cool to have a nice looking knee such as this one and it's really awesome for your mobility to have a knee that functions well. But there are a couple of things to be really, really careful of. Firstly, is it backed by a big company that can provide you with a kind of service and if you live where I live in South Africa, you don't necessarily have access to the service we might have in the US and the States or Canada or I don't know, even Australia, but certainly Europe where they're made. Um, and I have just shown you a bunch of knees, German, Japanese, American, yeah they're okay, but it's all about the socket. It's all about the socket and the prosthetist's ability to match the socket to the knee, to the foot, to the person and the person's lifestyle. 100% that is what will give you your quality of life again. Not the fanciness of the knee, the price tag, or that's all crap. That is not a guarantee for quality of life. That is a guarantee for a bank overdraft. The, the problem with the prosthetist not getting your socket right is, and this is what happened to me, is that you get uneven weight distribution at the bottom end of the socket. Uneven weight distribution means, um, means pressure points, and pressure points means sores, and sores will mean infections. Infections will mean pain. And this is where I fell down with a bunch of, I, I mean, I became completely addicted to painkillers. But I mean pain, pain, and then you have more operations, you know, I mean, I've had like 36 operations now due to negligence, a lot of it. Of course, the accident was a big part of it. And, and I mean, I went looking for shit. I had a paragliding accident. I wasn't hit by a car. It was no one's fault. It was entirely my choice. But that's a whole different story. So get the right prosthetist, not the fancy guy that looks like he has the best workshop. His workshop looks like this. That's cool, too. The fact is, Speak to people, get names from him, people that he's worked with, get their opinions, not just one person, speak to a few of them. Um, because the knee, you can have the best knee in the, on the planet, the best foot uh, mounted to it on the planet. If your socket doesn't work, none of it matters. It's all about the socket. It's all about the comfort in the socket. That is what will determine your, your quality of life. All right, that's my story for today. In the next vlog episode, I'm going to be talking about the day I lost my leg, what it was about, what went through my mind, what it was like to be taken into the hospital and to be told at that point, we're going to have to amputate your leg. All the thoughts that go through your mind at that point, waking up the next day with a mangled mess after the, after the operations and, and really not knowing what the hell to make of your life at that point and realizing that everything has changed. All right, guys, that's it from me today about prosthetics and amputation and all that good stuff. Please come back next time. I'll be illustrating how some of these knees and some of this equipment works. I'll be walking up and down and explaining more about the dynamics of all the equipment and different combinations. Until then, be safe. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments below. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for notifications for whenever you have more. Thank you. See ya. Bye.